to share trick this is raj here uh, friends uh, it's the weekend and we can use this time to build our knowledge and uh, vocabulary as a genomic investor uh, i think it's always important today i want to explain personalized medicine and how it relates to genomics and gene therapy uh, this is an important distinction and building block of knowledge for uh, every genomic investor in my personal opinion well before we proceed uh, thanks to our patrons and uh, members and subscribers for their support uh, without you guys i would not have been uh, able to find a purpose of making this channel and being productive as i glide into retirement and now we are almost close to 5000 subs and if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe we have really good stuff in the channel and um, i'm sure you'll enjoy every bit of it with that said let's get started <music> Welcome back friends. Personalized medicine also known as precision medicine is an approach to healthcare and medical treatment that takes into account an individual's unique characteristics such as their genetic makeup, environment, lifestyle and other factors to tailor medical decisions and treatments specifically for them. The goal of personalized medicine is to optimize the effectiveness of medicinal in interventions while minimizing potential side effects and risks. Here are some key components and concepts associated with personalized medicine. The very first one is something you guys are very familiar with it is genomics and genetics. One of the central pillars of personalized medicine is the understanding of an individual's genetic information. Advances in genetics and genomics have made it possible to analyze a person's DNA to identify generic varia- genetic variations uh, that could contribute to their susceptibility to certain diseases how they might respond to specific treatments and how they might metabolize med- medications for example braca that is the breast cancer susceptibility gene uh, testing is indeed an example of personalized medicine in diagnosis braca1 and braca2 are human genes that produce proteins that help to suppress the growth of tumors uh, mutations in these genes can significantly increase the risk of developing breast cancer and ovarian cancers Genetic testing for BRCA mutations is a prime example of personalized medicine because it involves analyzing an individual's genetic makeup to assess their susceptibility to specific type of cancer. Uh, here's how it fits into the personalized medicine framework. And then the second concept that I would like to uh, talk about is disease prevention and risk assessment. By analyzing an individual's genetic predispositions, lifestyle and environmental factors, healthcare professionals can assess a person's risk of developing a certain disease. This information can help guide preventative measures such as a lifestyle change or early screening to catch potential health issues before they become more serious. There are certain uh, people uh, whose family line is susceptible to intestinal cancer and if that is already known Uh, then they can be screened more often to make sure that any cancerous development can be caught very early uh, where there is a very good chance of um, putting them into remission so those kind of things are possible then we have uh, another concept that is targeted therapies in personalized medicine treatments are chosen based on a patient's uh, genetic profile and the molecular characteristics of their disease this can lead to a more effective and targeted therapy as well as uh, reduce likelihood of adverse reaction and ineffective treatment and we also have this concept of pharmacogenomics uh, the field uh, of uh, pharmacogenomics focuses on how an individual's genomic makeup influences the response to medi- medications by understanding an individual's genetic variants doctors can predict how they might react to specific drugs including how well they will metabolize them and whether they are likely to experience any side effects and then we have the individualized treatment plans which is developed based on all the factors that we spoke about so far rather than using a one size fits all approach personalized medicine aims to create individualized treatments these treatment plans uh, consider a patient's unique genetic information medical history lifestyle and preferences to determine the best course of action we also uh, have the use of technology in terms of data integration and analysis where personalized uh, medicine involves collecting and analyzing vast amounts of data from various sources such as genetic tests medical records and environmental information 
Advanced technologies including AI and machine learning are often employed to process and interpret these uh, huge volumes of data to make more informed medical decisions. However, there are still challenges when it comes to personalized medicines. Despite its potential benefits, personal and medicine, personalized medicine also faces challenges. These are ethical, legal and uh, privacy concerns surrounding the collection and use of genetic and personalized data. Additionally, the cost of genetic testing and data analysis can be a barrier to widespread implementation because the more you get personalized, the more uh, niche uh, technologies and uh, special uh, setups have to be made and all of those things cost a lot of money. However, when you go more and more generic, uh, you are dealing in huge volumes, so economies of scales click in and it becomes much more cheaper. So it's always a trade-off between uh, effectiveness and precision and uh, affordability. And uh, if you were to look at the issue of privacy concerns, one of the ways in which the industry is trying to handle that is by masking data and removing identifying uh, um, headers and uh, uh, data elements so that uh, while the essence of uh, the genetic uh, information is available, it cannot be uh, uniquely linked to anybody uh, in, per, uh, in particular. That way, uh, the data can be shared with a larger uh, pool of researchers and can be uh, pulled together to form uh, larger volumes that can then be analyzed by uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, in order to come up with conclusion by doing some pattern matching and uh, cause-effect relationships. So those are the kind of um, uh, constraints as well as opportunities that are there for personalized medicine going forward. And personalized medicine have been particularly transformative in cancer treatment. Genetic analysis of tumors uh, helps identify specific mutations delivering, uh, driving the cancer, allowing for targeted therapies that can be more effective than uh, traditional chemotherapy and you guys must already be familiar with um, this concept because we got the PREM concept where uh, uh, CAR T cells are uh, uh, programmed uh, towards PREM and then we have CD17, CD19 uh, based therapies. So all those things are you know specific markers of a cancer where uh, the CAR T is programmed uh, so that it can go and attach to the marker and um, it can command your uh, immune cells to come there, do uh, their magic of killing the cancer cell. In essence, personalized medication uh, aims to uh, move away from a generalized approach to healthcare and treatment and instead focuses on tailoring medical uh, decisions and interventions to each individual's unique characteristics. This approach has potential to revolutionize healthcare by improving treatment outcomes, minimizing adverse effects, and enhancing overall patient well-being. Gene therapy is a powerful example of personalized medicine where medical interventions are designed to target and correct specific genetic abnormalities in individuals by directly addressing the genetic uh, basis of diseases. Uh, gene therapy holds the potential to revolutionize healthcare by providing tailored treatments uh, that offer better efficacy and reduce side effects. So uh, when, when we look at it from a socioeconomic perspective, uh, you can see that um, a lot of people in the third world and developing countries uh, would probably not benefit from personalized medicine immediately because this is going to be uh, 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 in the forefront of uh, medicine in the G7 countries and the uh, rich nations because affordability is a question. Uh, but over a period of time, uh, it's going to become much more affordable because as it is, we have genomic sequencing machines which can uh, deliver a $100 human uh, genome sequencing uh, and uh, those kind of uh, enhancements uh, in technology are going to drive a lot of innovation and also artificial intelligence and machine learning are making it less expensive to do high volume uh, logical processing, pattern matching and those kind of things which was very human intensive in, in the beginning. So all those things put together will, uh, I think in my vision, uh, I'm thinking that in the G7 and advanced nations, these will be pioneered and then they will become generic and then they will go to the uh, developed nation. And when I say generic, I'm not talking about the therapies uh, being uh, generic. I'm talking about um, the offerings that are there for the diagnosis, uh, identification and everything. Those kind of things will become cheaper so that uh, the first um, uh, development would be that uh, the people in the developing nations and the less developed countries will start having a, 
uh, set of diagnostic uh, capabilities available uh, to them so that they can have an idea of uh, their own uh, makeup and what they are susceptible to, etc. And then comes the question of um, uh, subsidized uh, uh, therapies. So those are the places where uh, the diseases which are really uh, very difficult uh, are the ones which will be subsidized first, uh, assuming that uh, cure will be found in the uh, developed nations. And then they will go on to the less developed countries. And overall, all of humanity will continue to benefit in a period of time. So that's my vision. But uh, typically, all these um, uh, personalized medicine efforts are going to be in the rich countries. And uh, it will probably be driven by many of our genomic companies that we are in. And as you can see, uh, even CRISPR therapeutics, when it comes up, and uh, Blue Bluebird, when they come up with their uh, FDA-approved therapies for sickle cell disease, they'll all be in the millions in, the, in pricing. And it's very difficult to expect uh, lesser developed countries to be able to afford those kind of treatments. So once uh, these companies have uh, bought the therapies and uh, the uh, patent uh, uh, expires, after that, uh, those will also be available less expensively to uh, the less developed countries and um, uh, they will also benefit from it. So that's my uh, two cents. Uh, and now you know it. Um, hope you guys have um, uh, learned something from this video. And if there is something that I missed on uh, including in this video, please put it in the comment because many of our viewers are quite knowledgeable in genomics and, uh, and various concepts. So it will be very uh, helpful for myself as well as the community if you can add some value in the comment section. And uh, with that, uh, friends, I hope you guys have a splendid weekend. Uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Bye for now.